<laughs> oh, Belgium, so oh, so it's, it's the fire salamander. Yeah, yeah. It's the hottest herb. Beautiful creature. <laughs> <laughs> so first, let's get the first thing out of the way. That's the name. What the hell does it have to do with fire? Now, let me take you back a few centuries. Um, I found a first reference in, um, I, I guess, a book called the Talmud, which is some primary um, source for Jewish law and theology, if I understood correctly. But the point is, um, their salamanders are referred to as creatures that are created out of fire uh, and that are immune to the effects of it, the, this fire and whose blood is fireproof. Oh. Is... Why, did, why didn't they have a mother of salamanders in Game of Thrones then? <laughs> <laughs> and then there are these great illustrations with um, fire salamanders resting in the fire that are being harassed by men. And then there are um, other prominent figures like Saint Augustine, who also claimed that salamanders live in the fire. Uh, interestingly, apparently, um, that was recorded by naturalists. Um, and then you have Leonardo da Vinci, who wrote in his notebooks that the salamander has no digestive organs. <laughs> <laughs> on the fire, in which it even renews its scaly skin. Now, unfortunately, they were wrong. Oh. <laughs> not, not to be the case, but the name was very catchy, so I guess they just went with it. <laughs> then, um, there are about 13 subspecies. The most common one is the very originally named Salamandra, Salamandra, Salamandra. <laughs> <laughs> and then the one we have in Belgium is the Salamandra um, terrestris. But I'll keep it general because I can't see the difference myself anyway. So they are found in most of Europe with some gaps here and there. And in Belgium, they are exclusively found basically uh, in the south because of the forests, uh, and that's because they live in deciduous forests, so they are terrestrial, um, contrary to most other salamanders. Um, they do still require water for their um, reproduction, because the larvae need to develop um, in water, but otherwise they are terrestrial, and then they um, live in um, uh, in the leaf litter, uh, where they like moss and moist. Um, so, an obvious feature is their coloration. Um, they can be found um, being almost completely black to almost completely yellow, and then basically everything in between. And that even allows them to be identified individually. Now, as you might notice, they don't exactly blend into their environment. So that typically makes them the textbook um, example for aposematic species. Indeed, um, studies find, uh, for example, this one on the right, that salamanders that are more yellow um, experience less predation. However, when studies look at the link between this coloration and their toxicity, then they don't find any links, but they do for find, for example, um, that there is a difference between males and females um, in the coloration, but there is no um, relation with toxicity. Another study, again, finds no relationship between the coloration and the toxicity. However, in this case, they find that the albedo of the background on which the larvae develop influences their post-metamorphosis um, 
coloration. So if larvae are being um, or allowed to develop on um, surfaces that have a low albedo, then they are uh, have a higher ratio of black and yellow, so they are more black. While if they are uh, allowed to develop on um, surfaces with a higher albedo, then they have more yellow. Um, and again, this has no effect on the toxicity. So apparently they don't, I mean, it was always assumed that they um, are aposematic, but there doesn't seem to be a relationship um, now that they actually looked at it. But they are, of course, still toxic. Um, they have these glands, you can see it uh, in the picture. There, is the, there are these black dots um, just behind the head, which they can use to squirt out um, toxins. And these have an anti-predatory, antifungal, and antimicrobial function. And especially the antifungal function um, has been getting a lot of interest because of um, funguses like chytrid. So, unfortunately, uh, a few years ago, around 2013, uh, an Asian fungus called Bat Batrachut chytrium salamandrivorans um, was introduced in Europe, uh, specifically in, um, I think they uh, first found it in the Netherlands. And that was, or is assumed to have been imported through the pet trade from Asia, because in Asia it is a native species. But here the salamanders um, are very susceptible to it. So as, as soon as the first individuals started dying, the um, researchers started to um, closely monitor them. And in a few years time, the major populations were completely eradicated. So, um, Unfortunately, there are predictions that in um, 25 to 50 years, this might even lead the um, salamanders to go extinct, extinct completely because the um, fungus is so um, deadly. And there now, this year in August, there is even a um, conference, a, a symposium specifically for the problem of the chytrid. Um, so a lot of um, research groups are trying to find um, solutions because it, it's really a, a very big problem and um, they obviously want to save the species. So that was my herb of the week. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs>